There has to be some common sense. Yes, sir, they have the car stopped in town at the ranch by the We still don't know who pulled the trigger. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Police Off the Cuff Real Crime Stories. I'm your host, retired NYPD Sergeant, 27-year veteran out of Manhattan North Homicide Squad, Bill Cannon. Well, folks, there's been an arrest in the murder of Queen's mom, Osaya Gal. And like what everyone was saying, or the police were saying early on, uh, they sort of let it leaked out to the press that it was a handyman that um, had been doing work on the the Gall family house for a couple of years. In fact, it turned out that uh, Osoya and this handyman, whose name is uh, David Bonola, age 45, were, were romantically involved for over two years. And that was the source. The police described it as almost like a domestic violence incident. But as we sort of predicted yesterday, not to say I told you so, but based on the investigative indicators that this seemed like a relationship that was uh, going to be broken off. And frequently when that happens, when it's the idea of one and not the other, violence ensues. I'm going to just show you a little bit of a report that um, the local news did about this, this breaking story. And then we'll get to the press conference uh, in regards to this case with uh, Chief of Detectives uh, James Essig. Uh, so let's let's play a little of this. So, folks, you heard that from a a local news person, and there's a lot of evidence in this case. There's tremendous amount of forensic evidence, as well as um, we'll we'll learn a little more when I play the uh, press conference. And I just want to make a couple of comments. You know, yesterday when Phil and I were dissecting this case and giving our expert opinion, a lot of people in the chat, some people don't understand um, investigation to the point that in no way were we ever trying to disparage or say a gal, but it's important to the investigation to state the facts. And the facts were pointing to the potentiality that she was having an affair. And that, in fact, is now a fact. So for us not to report that as part of our investigative breakdown of these of this situation, we would be remiss in our duties. We're not journalists, we're not news reporters, but It's our duty to break this case down with our expertise. We'll get a much better breakdown from us than you will from journalists, but we're going to state the facts. And if that um, upsets you, then maybe you shouldn't be listening to a real crime um, station on YouTube. I'm just want to state that because I want to make it very clear. We're going to report this. Homicide is an ugly business. You know, it's very ugly. And, you know, some people in the chat expect us to sugarcoat this we're not going to you're not going to at all folks this is police off the cuff real crime stories if you're not subscribed to us please go on our youtube hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up ring that bell and if you want to contribute to us uh, we have a patreon with three different levels and if you want to join our youtube family we have channel members you see the folks with the green font in the chat Uh, And they're part of our channel members. We have five different levels of that. Another thing I want to just comment on quickly before I go to the press conference is that the Queens Detectives and Queens Homicide did a fantastic job on this. And I always say that the public is very impatient. When a heinous crime like this happens, they want the arrest to occur immediately. And it's not going to happen. And perhaps they had a suspect immediately or very close to after it happened. However, they didn't release that because they want to build the case for for numerous different reasons. I'm going to go to the press conference with NYPD Chief of Detectives James Essig, and you're going to have a lot of your questions that you may have are going to be answered during this press conference. And it is fascinating what they found out. And let's watch a little bit of the uh, press conference here. Good morning, everybody. Chief James Essig, Chief of Detectives in the New York City Police Department. With me here today is from Patrol Services Bureau, uh, Chief Carlos Valdez from Queens North, 
commanding officer of 112, Inspector Joe Kappelman, uh, the assistant chief, Joe Kenny, the citywide investigation chief, Julie Morell, the Queens investigation chief who, who uh, led this investigation, Lieutenant Timmy Thompson from Queens North Homicide, the two case detectives, Detective Carmine Caruso from Queens North Homicide and Detective John Benzol from the 112 uh, Precinct Detective Squad. So, good morning, everybody. Last night, while detectives were canvassing for video, they observed a male who was wanted for questioning in a horrendous homicide. He voluntarily came back to the 112 precinct and made incriminating statements. Today, that male, David Bonalla, male 44 years old, residing at 10418 114th Street in Queens, New York, is being charged with murder in the second degree, criminal tampering in the first degree, and criminal possession of a weapon in the fourth degree in relation to the death of Osolia Gal, female, 51 years old. This investigation is still preliminary. There is a lot of work left to do, but this is what I can tell you. On Friday night, April 15th, Miss Gal attends a show at Lincoln Center. She takes the train back to her neighborhood in Forest Hills. At 11.20 p.m., she stops in a local establishment for a short while before returning home. We believe she returns home at 12.20 a.m. We also believe Mr. Bonella arrives at her residence between 12.30 and 12.40 a.m. Mr. Bonella is a handyman who was employed by Mrs. Gal. They have been having an intimate affair for approximately two years. He is either let in voluntarily or he uses a key he has knowledge about hidden in the barbecue. A heated argument ensues between the two in the basement. A knife is brandished, a violent struggle ensues, resulting in our victim being stabbed ruthlessly and brutally in excess of 55 times, causing her demise. Recovered at that crime scene is a knife which we believe was used. Mr. Bonella then retrieved a hockey bag belonging to Miss Gal's son, placed her in the bag, and as video showed, was seen rolling the body down the sidewalks, leaving a bloody trail through the streets of Forest Hills. At 7.50 a.m. Saturday, April 16th, that duffel bag was recovered at Metropolitan Avenue and the Jackie Robinson Parkway by a member of the public. We believe that after disposing of the body, Mr. Bonella fled through Forest Park, where investigators discovered the jacket believed to be worn by him during this vicious crime. Detectives also developed leads which led them to a location where boots, a t-shirt, and bloody bandages were discovered. Investigation also revealed that on Saturday, Mr. Bonella received treatment for wounds to both hands at an area hospital. As I said before, this case is still ongoing. We are still awaiting forensics evidence and are canvassing for more victim uh, video as we speak. But detectives through interviews, videos, and the public's help, and specifically the Queens DA, me, uh, uh, Melinda Katz and her staff who have been with us every step of the way, were able to quickly take this killer off the street. I just want to assure the public and especially the residents of Forest Hills that there are no outstanding suspects at this time. Uh, with that, I'd like to take any questions. At the, at the, at this time, he has no arrests uh, that we know of. Juliet, Juliet, hold on, ma'am. Ma'am, hold on. Juliet, could you talk a little more about the nature of the relationship? Is this something that wasn't uh, she rejecting him? Mm -hmm. Why were they getting into the argument at all? This is Lieutenant Timmy Thompson from the Queens North Homicide Squad. Good afternoon, everybody. We believe the relationship that the uh, Mr. Benilla had with our victim was a intimate type relationship, and this stemmed to be a domestic type dispute that they were having over their intimate relationship 
they were they started to get into just regular domestic issues that seemed to occur between them. Was he living in that house at any point in time when he was raped? At this time, not that we know of. And also, do you happen to know in, in Chicago and work that he was doing at the house? He, he has been doing work at that residence for approximately two years on and off. Well, uh, I mean, he made incriminating statements. We're not going to go into what he talked about. This is still under investigation. But uh, we, working with the Queens District Attorney's Office, we have enough to arrest him and charge him with the murder. Chief, when, when they... Uh... Breaking up, and what about the shut upstairs? Was he alerted to this? Is that why he fled quickly with the duffel bag? First question first. I'm, I'm sorry, you, you said, were they breaking up? They had been off and on, and they had broken up prior, but had reunited early in the month of April. Uh, and their relationship was considered at an end. By, by her. I I we don't have her statement yet. Uh, can you talk a bit about the uh, alleged text messages that came to her husband who was out of town? Did, did he indeed get a message and was it threatening? A, a message was sent from the victim's cell phone to the husband. That message uh, was, as previously reported, that uh, there had been a crime in the past that was now uh, that 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 same person from the crime in the past was back again. We believe that to be completely false as far as there was nothing to do with any crime in the past in this case. We we have it from in in the confession that he sent that message and he has no burglary in the past. That is the nature of the message. We don't believe there was any danger to the family. We believe he just didn't want it to be found by the family. The knife is consistent with knives that are in the home. Tony? Uh, Detective Johnson, uh, the uh, relationship, did it, there's a report that it may have started while she went on an overseas trip and met the defendant overseas. Any truth to that? So at this time, we don't believe that to be true. Next one. Chief, or maybe Mr. Charlie, Julie, do we know if the husband was aware of the relationship, if it's two years or more, between his wife and the suspect? We're not going to. We're not, we're not going to. Go. Mark was the handyman. Did the husband know the handyman? Was he known to the family? Yes, he was. Okay. Hi, so I just wanted to clarify one thing you said. You said they were on and off, that they had reunited in April, but now it was at an end. So are we saying that they had broken up or that they were dating? Uh, as, as we stated earlier, uh, on and off, and he came back this evening to speak about the relationship again. Marco, the chief, the, the uh, duffel bag in question, does he go into the son's room to get it? At any point, is his son woken up or aware of what's going on? The duffel bag was not kept in the son's room. So, and the son mm -hmm. slept loud? This is not an instance where the son interrupted what was going on? The son did not interrupt what was going on. Okay, we're going to take two more. Ricardo. Where did the suspect arrive? Uh, he is a can speak to that. Mexican. So we preliminarily, part of our investigation, we believe he, he arrived here approximately 21 years ago, and we believe he be, came from Mexico. Right here. Uh, is, is he currently illegal resident here? Did he come illegally? And my second question is, before this oh. happened, uh, was she followed from the bar? Okay, folks, you heard the uh, press conference. Most, I think, of, if not all of um, your questions, as well as the press questions, 
or answered. Some of the interesting points that were raised here is that um, Osaya was uh, at Lincoln Center earlier in the night, and then prior to going home, she went to a local bar that was close to her house, and she had a drink. And she arrived home at approximately 12.20 a.m., 0020 hours, you military types. And at about 12.30 to 12.40 hours, the, the perp, uh, David Bonilla, arrives at the house. They made it clear that he was not inside the house. He had he knew where the key was. Apparently, he was hidden near the grill, and I uh, we surmised that he let himself in. Um, at some point during that that time, and here's here's a picture of uh, of David Bonola right there. At some point, an argument ensued, and resulting in Osaya Gal Miss Gal. Uh, being stabbed over 55 times, uh, leading to her death. Um, you heard them say in the press conference that this was a um, an ongoing relationship, a romantic relationship for over two years. And yesterday, Phil and I were talking about, without knowing about this individual specifically, that based on the injuries that Osaya had, 55 stab wounds, that this was a crime of extreme passion, uh, extreme rage, and extreme, you know, personal, personal. So we sort of predicted that this was going to be a relationship that was about to break up. And unlike, well, basically the, the detectives, the investigators said this was just like any other domestic violence incident, but uh, no, no, just not just like any other, but this ended in death and a horrendous, horrendous death. Many of your other questions people, folks asked was, um, the knife that was recovered, uh, did he bring that knife with him, which would have showed premeditation, or was the knife on the scene? And apparently the knife is consistent with other knives found in the house, so they felt that he um, he just picked the knife up from in the house, and he didn't, in fact, bring a knife with him uh, to this meeting, to this dispute. Um, so in that way, it's not premeditated. One of the things, and, and you know, they were careful to say about, he made, the uh, chief of detectives, Essig said that he made some um, statements that implicated himself. However, then later on, uh, I believe Chief Morell from Queens Detectives, who ran the investigation, she stated he made a full confession. All right, so... That's great. He made a full confession. One of the things I would have definitely asked him, I would have showed him this video. You see that picture, a still from the video. I would have showed him that video, and I would have asked him, is that you? And I would actually show him a still from it like that and have him sign and date and time, put the time down when he admits, yes, that's me. Because a defense attorney will say, "How do this isn't him. This could have been someone else. It's definitely not him. But if you get the defendant to sign off on it, it's a very powerful, powerful piece of evidence. Um, some of the other things that we're learning, uh, and I spoke about this yesterday too, when someone stabs someone 55 times or that many times, they are bound to cut themselves. And sure enough, he cut himself on both hands. So when they complete the examination of this crime scene, there is no doubt in my mind that they're going to discover his blood inside the crime scene. If you listen to the press conference, they indicated that they found, um, excuse me, they discovered that he went to the hospital on Saturday morning for treatment of, of cuts to his hands. So tremendous, tremendous evidence, tremendous evidence. They also. Um, he told them that he fled through Forest Park. So like good detectives, they followed the path that he told them, and they discovered boots, uh, a T-shirt, and a bloody bandage. Again, tremendous, tremendous physical evidence. Great follow-up work by the detectives. In the interview, uh, we don't know what he said in the interview and the interrogation part of it. We just know that he waived, he waived his Miranda rights, and he willfully gave a statement. 
And according to Chief Morell, he confessed. So that is very strong. And a very go a good detective or good detectives will have him um, confess to each different part of the crime and the evidence. And the other thing that, that we, we know now also is that they had very good video at this house. So when they said that Miss uh, Muskaya, uh, Miss Gall, came home at 1220, I think they know that specifically from the video surveillance. And when they say he entered the apartment between 1230 and 1240, and I think they specifically know that from video surveillance. So when you consider the amount of evidence in this case, it's it's just mind-boggling. We haven't even gotten to um, to the cell phone evidence, which is apparently very, very strong evidence also. And they haven't even totally dug into that, nor have we dug into all of the forensic evidence that they have. Blood evidence, you know, the, the knife or his fingerprints on the knife. All of that stuff uh, has to still be done. And uh, it's, you know, it it's something that is, is follow-up investigation. Uh, you know, when people, people think in cases like this that once they arrest somebody, uh, the case is over. And that's not true. There's still a ton of work to do. Uh, Post arrest, and that that has to be made clear, because the investigators, you know, they are compiling all the evidence. Again, we use that cliche: they're crossing their T's and and dotting their eyes, and that's a hundred percent true. They're, they're they're doing that and uh, building the strongest possible case they can against this perpetrator, uh, David uh, David Bonola. Uh, let me play a little bit of some other um, news stations on what they were saying about this case. Okay. Sorry, folks. I I uh, I didn't have the the sound put up on this one. Let me just get it taken off again. I'll remove it and put it back. But uh, another another. Uh, TV station that um, that gave a report, a, a follow-up on this case, if you will. And let, let's see what they had to say with this. Um, there you go. I'll get this right. I'll get this right this time. Second time's a, a charm, as they say, you know. An arrest has been made in the murder of a Queen's mother. 44-year-old David Benola was arrested overnight in Queens in connection with the death of 51-year-old Osoya Gall. This comes days after police say Gall was stabbed over 50 times inside her Forest Hills home. Benola is facing several charges, including murder and criminal tampering. The OIPD is expected to hold a news conference later on this morning to give you an update on the case. You can watch that live at 1130 right here on CBS News New York. So, folks, one of the things also they, that I wanted to make clear in the investigation was there was a, a text message sent by her phone, allegedly sent by the killer, claiming that he was going to kill the whole family because they had testified against him in a burglary arrest and put him in prison. Apparently, that was David Bonola sending that uh, message to uh, the husband of Osaya Gal. However, there is no truth to the fact that they put him in prison for burglary. He, it seemed like he was just trying to somehow throw off the investigation and uh, throw off the detectives with that. It had really nothing to do with this case. Uh, when we look at the timeline there, uh, it, it shows, well, prior earlier in the night that she had gone to Lincoln Center in Manhattan to see a show and then... Uh, she went out with, uh, she went to a local bar and had a drink, and then she returned home, and they, they said exactly about 12, 20 a.m. And um, it was this, this timeline was later on tightened up much better by the fact that David Bonola entered the house between 12.30 and 12.40 a.m., so 0030, 0040, 
And that's when the crime occurred. And at 0430 hours, 430 a.m., they refer to in this timeline a mysterious figure seen dragging a duffel bag down the sidewalk from uh, the Gal's home. And that was David Benola, undoubtedly. And I'm sure the detectives showed him that picture and asked him, was that you? And then at 8 o'clock that morning, a dog walker discovers the duffel bag and Osoya Gall's uh, body there. So again, uh, one of the things that people want to know about the, the perpetrator, um, uh, David Benoya, Benola, um, what was his criminal history? And apparently he's never been arrested before, apparently. Uh, he came to the United States from Mexico approximately 21 years ago. That was made clear by the lieutenant from Queens Homicide. His um, immigration status, we have no idea at this point. We don't know if he's here legally or illegally. That wasn't broached by the investigators. Uh, let's see what, uh, I don't know, Peter Rabbit, you're answering someone else's question in the chat. I'm not sure what you're referring to, so I'm not going to go there. If you want to clear it up, uh, I would gladly read it. Marie Green, uh, frenzy, poor woman, and that was a man who was in love with her. Good Lord. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's why yesterday we were talking about the, the passion and, and the personalness and the rage involved in stabbing someone 55 times. And besides the, the evidence, obvious evidence we're talking about, um, there's going to be a lot of forensic evidence. I'm sure that on the body of Osaya Gall, there's going to be um, David Bonola's DNA, uh, perhaps under her fingernails. Perhaps her blood could be on, his blood could be on her. No doubt her blood is on the clothing that the detectives recovered from Forest Park, which, you know, doing a good interview and a good follow-up investigation, they were able to, to get that information from David Bonola. Um, you know, once one of the things when a detective does an interview of a suspect, well, he was under arrest uh, I believe uh, they brought, maybe they brought him in voluntarily. He, uh, I think that was indicated, came into the precinct voluntarily. Now he was a, um, he was a suspect. Uh, let's not use the term person of interest. He was a suspect. So when they bring him into the uh, interrogation room, um, they would have to read him Miranda. All right. Um, that's the rights of a person in custody. You guys hear it on TV all the time, ad nauseum. You have the right to remain silent, uh, blah, 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 blah. If you give up that right, anything you, you say can and will be used against you. In a, we, you guys know the drill. So he waved his Miranda. They spoke to him. And apparently uh, he confessed to it. Some of the things that the detectives will do during that interview is cover every single part of that timeline. And as I mentioned, uh, it would have been a great idea for them to show him the picture a still photo, this still photo that you see on the screen of this individual who I think we know right now is David Benola, show him that picture and just ask him, is that you? And when he says yes, that's a very, very, very powerful piece of evidence because without him saying that's me, I don't think anyone could specifically identify him from that photo because you can't see his face. But when he says, he testifies or he gives a statement yes that's me tremendously tremendously uh powerful piece of evidence um you know you see the on the bottom right of this photo of course that's the gall family home and that's uh a soya up on the top with the little dog everyone's asking about that little dog and then you see the crime scene unit processing uh that duffel bag and of course, there's going to be a ton of forensic evidence on the duffel bag, near the duffel bag, uh, evidence belonging to Osoya, as well as evidence, forensic evidence belonging to David uh, Benola. I think in a case like this, it's also, um, it, it puts the neighborhood at ease. So now that they know that, no, this isn't some lunatic criminal going around house to house and killing people. It was very specific, and Osoya was spe specifically targeted from this um, 
relationship gone bad. Jane Darby, what a thoughtful guy. Murder your mom, but do not want you to find her great figuring in the middle of no thinking. Well, Jane, I don't know what you missed. It's not his mom. It was his lover. Uh, this was a handyman with whom a Sawyer had been having a two-year affair with. Uh, so I just want to clear that up. It's not his mom. Um, Pete, Peter uh, Bedrock, phone tell if he talked before killing her. Well, you know, I, that's a, another thing I was referring to before. There's no doubt there's going to be tons of communication on the cell phone, text messages, conversations. There was even some evidence on YouTube. They had corresponded on YouTube. Um, so all of that, all of that evidence has to be collected. All of that evidence will be used in a trial. All of that evidence can be used, uh, to convict David Bonolo. Um, Kate 76 just goes to show what one bad decision can lead to. So sad for the victim and her family. Yes. Very sad. I mean, for her husband, her, her children, uh, uh, desire of the heart, police off the cuff. Why do you think he left her where he left her? You know, I, I don't think you can um, go into the killer's mind and think like he's thinking rationally. He wasn't thinking rationally. I think he had said to detectives he just wanted to get the body out of the house. He didn't want the family to discover the body. So that was his thinking as far as that. But as far as where he dumped it, I don't think he was really thinking rationally. And at some point, once he left the body where it was and he takes off through Forest Park, you know, now he's in escape mode. Now he's in, I got to get away with this. I got to get away because they're going to find out I did this. But I don't think you can think rationally because someone has stabbed someone 55 times. Uh, I don't think that, um, I don't think he's thinking rationally. Let's put it that way. It's a crime of uh, passion. Uh, he must have just lost it and picked up that knife and started stabbing her. Perhaps she told him that their relationship was over and she wanted him out, and that's that's when it happened. Peter Rabbit, I'm wondering how many affairs are due to people taking DHEA. I'm not sure what you mean by that. It makes you more sexual aggressive, changes you. I'm explaining what it does to you. They need to check both people's blood. Uh, look, I, I don't think that they're going to look into that. I think they, this is a a, um, a crime of passion. It was two consenting adults, one who wanted to break off the relationship. These type of things can happen. Uh, Diane S. Bill, you and Phil called it, was personal, and it escalates in potentially ending a relationship. You know, we've covered in the last month or so, we've covered uh, a bunch of domestic violence type incidents. Um, um, Cassie Cawley in Florida horrendous uh, horrendous murder uh, where a couple not even together uh, where apparently the boyfriend, the baby's father murdered her because he was just he was just wanted to be in control and just ha had such rage so it's hard to describe or to reason why someone does something when they're filled with all this rage. Um, Barbara Ann, uh, I tend to agree. Her children will suffer as a result of her poor and dangerous choice. Um, Duke Metzger, at Real with Robo, yes, but murder is still wrong. But I too do tend toward thinking she brought this on herself. But it doesn't make what happened right. You know, folks, uh, one of the things that we know and uh, in the police business is we we tr we try not to moralize about people's life choices, right? People make good and bad decisions every single day. Some decisions are you know morally wrong, but, but, but it's not the police's job to moralize about someone's decision about having an affair or whatever you might say. And as I was talking about. Um, before, someone yesterday in the chat got a little annoyed that I said that this was probably um, an affair that uh, that was broken up. And, oh, how can you say that? Look, if I'm doing that from an investigative point of view. 
because that's what all the indicators were in regards to what happened, that that was, in fact, what had happened. And sure enough, Phil and I predicted exactly what happened. You know, and not that we're geniuses, but there was a lot of investigative indicators that were telling us that. Uh, Betty Smith, Bill, maybe they did ask him if that was him, and he said, yes, we don't know. They are New York's finest. Looks like they are very good at what they do. Betty Smith, they did a fantastic job, and I'll be the first one to say that. And I, they, I believe they probably did ask him, is this you? Because, look, I didn't invent that. I had a detective in my team one time, and we had a uh, 13-year-old girl murdered in this apartment on Riverside Drive. And there was video of both the perps going into the apartment. And it was so grainy, you couldn't tell who the hell it was. And then there was a video of them coming down from the apartment after they had uh, committed the murder and a burglary of them leaving with suitcases full of um, uh, burglarized, uh, the proceeds of the burglary. And again, the video was horrible. And my detective showed it to both perps and each one of them <laughs> identified themselves. They said, hey, that's me. And I was just like, uh, Joe, that was great that you thought of doing that. That was excellent. So I'm sure the Queens detectives probably thought of that too. And it's really, really excellent, uh, excellent evidence. Um, Griminator Patty, there are other camera shots from other neighbors that are very clear, they say. Very possible, Griminator Patty, but I, I don't know if, if any of them can identify the perpetrator's face. But as I said, if they would have showed that still or the video to him and he identified himself, that's gold. That is such gold, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's so amazing. I mean, look, the Queens detectives today, today is what, Thursday? This just happened Saturday. I mean, was it fast enough? Was the arrest fast enough for you guys? No one, you know, people think that the arrest should happen like, boom, crime happens and the detectives. And a lot of them don't understand that processing evidence and collecting video and having all of this evidentiary material at your fingertips when you conduct an interview with the suspect slash perpetrator slash person of interest, like they love to say, which I hate to say. And if the if the suspect perpetrator slash person of interest starts doing a tap dance and you have all of the evidence to confront him with. And that can change a suspect's mind. Uh, Cannon, I think he meant in the son's viewpoint, like he murdered his mom, but didn't want him to find her, not the purpose mom. Okay, I'm sorry, then I misunderstood. Uh, yeah, like the perpetrator murdered uh, the 13-year-old's mom and he didn't want the young boy to find his mom i mean i would find that hard to believe a little bit uh, that this guy you know stabbed osaya 55 times now he's worried about a son you know i i don't know he may have said that i have a hard time believing that he was really sincere about that because you know again this this was a crime of uh of rage you know april uh still cannot believe 13 year old saw and heard nothing april you know you saw you saw their house, right? So the house was uh, I don't know the the thirteen year old could have been on the top floor. Um, this crime occurred uh, in the basement. So yeah, look at the house. You know, potentially could he have been in one of these upper rooms? And the basement is all the way, you know, of course, two or three flights down. It's potentially he, he, that uh, maybe he didn't hear it. You know, I don't think that's totally unbelievable. When you see the layout of the house, it's an old Tudor house. The young man could have been on his computer. He could, make, could have had headphones on. We don't know. But that's, you know, that's not uh, that important to the case right now. Um, what's important to the case is them, the detectives, the investigators, putting together the most solid case they can possibly have. And now, look, uh, David Bonola is under arrest. He's not going anywhere. Let's hopefully the Queen's DA uh, doesn't give bail on this case, which would be a travesty of justice. But as you guys recall, with bail reform, bail is just about securing the defendant to come back to court, to come back for trial. It's not about 
It's not punitive. It's not punishing him. And I don't think judges are allowed to consider David Bonola being a danger to the community. So I wouldn't be surprised in this day and age would be horrendous that he gets bailed. But uh, I'm sure the bail would be an extremely high bail. So we we don't know. There's another picture of the David Bonola on the screen. Uh, there's two pictures, and of course with uh, with the victim uh, in the middle there. Uh, Aunt BB, I'm just thinking maybe he knew she went out to the bar before returning home and got jealous. You know, I I don't know the. Um, they were very careful, the Queen's detectives, the chief of detectives, they were very careful at saying he made uh, statements implicating himself. And then the chief from uh, Queen's, uh, Chief Morell, she made a statement that he made a confession. So if he fully confessed, that means he took full responsibility for his part in, in the murder of Osoya Gal. Um JPL, does children's names should be kept out of the media? God knows they have a lot to deal with once they go back to school. I think they, their names will be kept out of the media. I think the media sh has a little bit of um, responsibility. Kate76, God tells us not to do certain things, not because he wants to keep us from having fun, but to spare us the consequences of certain actions. Much sympathy to our family. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Betty Smith he might as well plead, just plead guilty. Jesus, a mountain of evidence against him. I agree, and uh, but it's up to the detectives to keep piling up that evidence to make that mountain higher because uh, this is a big case, uh, and we want to make sure that he goes away. Diane S. Speculation is perhaps the son was listening up music, or if the murder occurred in the basement, may not have heard a thing. The perp unlocked the door. The first few stabs may have ended her life. That's very possible. That's very possible. You know, you heard not to get so graphic, but you also heard that um, that there were defense wounds all over her hands and her arms. So that is indicative of the fact that the victim fought for her life. And defense wounds, of course, occur on the hands as you're trying to block the knife on the arms. Same thing. And overall, I think they indicated that there was um, over 55 stab wounds. And there was numerous stab wounds to the neck and other parts of the body. So uh, Jeanette Hopkins, it might be the argument built up over a period of time, like an hour before it resulted in her death that may be in his confession. Very possible. Very possible. Uh, wishing be. April, she was likely discussing the breakup. He had to wash up, bandage his own wounds, figure out what to put her in. He even texted her husband, and that would have taken time to figure out. Yeah, I mean, you guys are thinking about all the possibilities in this case. Uh, I'm just thinking about building the strongest case possible uh, and putting and making sure David Bonola never gets out of prison. You know. Uh, that he does a long time in prison. Um, folks, I'm going to take a, um, a quick um, commercial break with this. Joe Murray, attorney at law, who was actually a big supporter of this channel. He was actually on the show last night as a co-host. And Joe M Murray is a criminal defense attorney. And uh, as I said, a big friend of the show. Joe Murray is a retired uh, NYPD member of the service, uh, retired as a police officer. Uh, you can reach him at jmurray-law.com. Uh, his cell phone number is 718-514-3855. Or you can email him at joe at jmurray-law.com. Great friend of the show, Joe Murray, and uh, he's, a, he's a fantastic attorney. So if you're looking for an attorney, criminal attorney, Joe's your man. Uh, John Beatty. John Beatty Law, www.jbeattylaw.com. John Beatty is a renowned personal injury attorney. He also retired as a decorated NYPD sergeant. For over 15 years, John has litigated some of the largest accident and malpractice cases and verdict settlements in the country. 
John comes from a proud NYPD and FDNY family. He was an active sergeant in Brooklyn North and supervised in the legal bureau. John is a proud member of the Honor Legion and the Blue Knights. John Beatty litigates across the country for seriously injured victims and has helped recover over $200 million for grieving families. Call John now for a free consultation. John Beatty, 917-797-9520. John Beatty Law, www.jbeattylaw.com. We got a, we got some amazing guys from this job that have retired and uh, have become attorneys. And um, what better attorney is there than someone that knows both sides of the fence, you know? And um, Joe Murray and John Beatty happen to be that, you know? Um, Duke Metzger, yeah, I too feel for the rest of the family, so sad and so dang brutal. I think that brutality makes it more difficult for the family. Yes, look, you can't even imagine what the family's going through at this point. Just just horrendous. Uh, cult member, please don't victim blame. I don't victim blame. I go over the investigation. I'm not blaming anyone. I don't know if anyone in the chat is blaming the victim. We certainly have to go over the uh, facts and circumstances of the case. Um, Edmund Summer, it's sad because so many people have affairs and don't all end in murder. It's unfair to judge this woman. No one's judging this woman. You know, what happened, the uh, relationship was uh, was ending, and this was horrible, what occurred. It's just like any other uh, domestic violence incident. Tom Cusinelli, she still had a family. Like a perp who gets killed, they have families. That's why we do what we do on this job. 100% Captain Tom, and uh, we don't moralize. We just take the facts and take the case uh, from where it's going. Uh, Edward Martin, great video last night. You hit the nail on the head with the timeline of the victim. Also that he would have wounds on his hands. You guys are good. Well, thank you, Edward Martin. It's Besides being good, it has to do with experience and knowing what happens um, in these cases, you know. Um, Alicia Lloyd, are there any cases of men being murdered? I always, the women as victims, that said, yes, there are cases of that. I don't have them specifically at my fingertips, but yes, there are. Uh, Diane S., thank you so much. This channel is second to none. Please hit the like, thumbs up, and subscribe and share. Thank you so much, Diane S., really appreciate that. Marie Green, she must have had low self-esteem to have an affair with a man like that. No one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Very sad. Yes, the whole case is very sad. Guys, I just really want to shout out to the, the great work done by uh, Queen's Homicide. I think that they did a fantastic job. Uh, Tom Cusinelli, we work for God. Vernon Gebreth, I know Vernon Gebreth is the retired lieutenant who wrote the book Practical Homicide Investigation. When I used to teach college, I used to use that book to teach the homicide course. Great book. I think it needs to seriously be updated, but it was it was a great book. I think it still is a great book. I hope it's updated to modern times, though, because it was back then there was nothing in that book about it, electronics of you know cell phones or anything like that. Uh, uh, so yeah, great book. Aunt BB, I'll say it again, Bill. I'd like to borrow the NYPD in my neck of the woods. Excellent work. Queens Homicide, Queens Detectives, all the bosses, the chiefs involved. Fantastic job. And they're going to continue to do a fantastic job to make sure that uh, this guy, David David Bonola, goes to prison for the rest of his life. And uh, that's our wishes. We also wish that he doesn't get bailed. Uh, Edward Martin, this guy must have been stalking her and waiting outside for her to come home. He could have had a tracking app on a phone to follow her. Edward, he didn't even need that. He had he knew where the key was to their house, so he could help himself into their house. So he didn't need to stalk her. However, it's clear that the relationship was breaking up, and that no doubt contributed to this horrible conclusion and this horrible murder. Um just, just a horrible, horrible situation. And the family, again, has to live with this. And uh, we as 
folks looking from Patty Banks. Thank you for the 199 Super Chat. Since he confessed, will there be a trial? Patty Banks, yes, there will definitely be a trial. Uh, the fact that you confess doesn't mean you plead guilty. It just makes it more difficult for you at a trial, but it de- doesn't mean you pled guilty. Uh, Jakey, five in UK, no one gets bail. If there is evidence, they're kept on remand in prison until a court hearing. Regardless, I find it shocking in the USA that people can get bail in circumstances like that. Yeah, well, welcome to the USA, and it's getting more and more lenient. Uh, Girl Friday, praying for the whole family. Crime of passion is an understatement. Uh, You know, it seems like every week now, there's been some major case across New York City. Uh, last week, it was the subway shooter in Brooklyn. This week, it's this case. Uh, Laura Graverholt, I never left my children home alone at 13. I just couldn't take any chances. Too much can go wrong. I guess I was just too nervous of a mom. Uh, What is that white covering he is wearing? I've never seen that before. And someone arrested. Is that a new thing? And why? I, I don't have the the uh, perp walk. He's probably wearing a Tyvek suit. What that is for is that when he's arrested, they'll take his clothing and they will put him in that Tyvek suit uh, so that they can take his clothing. He can't walk around naked. So I'm not seeing the perp walk, but I assume that's what they put on him. It's called a Tyvek suit. Um, we used to wear them when we were sifting through the debris at the World Trade Center. Uh, so, uh, Lieutenant Peter Pranzo, yes, Bill, congrats in order for Queens Detectives, NYPD. Fantastic job, Queens Detectives, NYPD detectives, the greatest detectives in the world, they say. They brag, and I think it's true. Uh, uh, News is saying it was a two-year relationship. Yes, I indicated that, that they had a romantic relationship for over two years. Um, I think that was indicated. Um, uh, okay, Peter, we get your drift on this horrible stuff. Okay, oh, I'm not reading that because it's not pertinent to what to what I'm talking about right now. Um, you know, sometimes you got sometimes folks in the in the chat. Uh, they have like their own agenda. They want to change the course of of the chat, and I, I you know, I have to make sure that uh, I don't allow that to happen because it's not uh, it's not conducive to everyone else that that's listening. You know, so folks, I think um, I think there you have it. You know, uh, the murder occurred on Saturday morning, I believe, and we are on Thursday, and the case is solved. An arrest has been made. New York City detectives doing an amazing, amazing job. Uh, and as I said, it seems like every week there's a major case like this. And you see these press conferences. Imagine that, you know, every week something major hitting the headlines in the way of crime. So, folks, again, uh, if you're not subscribed to our channel, this is Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories. Go on our YouTube, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and ring that bell. If you want to help us out, contribute, you can join our Patreon, or you can become a channel member by joining our YouTube channel members. There's five different levels, and we'd love to have you aboard. You can see the folks in the in the chat with the green font. They're all members of the Police Off the Cuff Real Crime Stories family. So, guys, unless anyone has anything else that's uh, smoking gun-like, I'm going to say goodbye today, and I hope that today you enjoyed the show that we gave you a uh, a good update in regards to, uh, to what's going on in this case. So for all you folks listening to Police Off the Cuff, God bless, have a great day, and I hope to see you guys soon. One episode, just